Hi, my name is Ryan Johnson, engineer with Woodward Fire District. I'm going to talk a little bit today about our uh, new chainsaw. This is still MS-461, which is replacing the MS-440s, which uh, we've been using for quite some time here in the district. And we're going to talk a little bit about tool familiarization and operation, specifically uh, starting procedure and setting tension on our, on our chain. So really quickly, I'll just go through deconstructing the saw really quick. Uh, we've got fuel and bar oil, as we always have, air box, uh, choke lever, and decompression switch, and chain brake. We start by just, uh, we'll just really quickly go through with our preferred uh, mint, our preferred method for method for setting chain tension. You see if I just break the bar nuts loose here. And create some slack in my chain. You can see I've got a nice group of chain here. And I also have play in the bar. The bar will move up and down. If I tip the bar in and take that play out of the bar, and then simply just start to thread in the tensioner until the, the chain comes up and rests against the bottom of the bar. Tighten my back bar nut. That's going to get you really ballpark right where you want to be, where you can pull that, get that three teeth, three tooth look that you're looking for. What's really important here is that we don't over tighten the chain and we don't over tension the chain because that will start to mushroom out our bar and will overheat, uh, overheat chains and bars. This is something that you're just going to need to work with. That is something that works for me. Uh, and you can work through it and, and find if it works for you or not, but the most important thing being that we're not over tensioning the saw. So for non-emergent starting, uh, for doing rig checks and, and the sort, um, we're always going to make sure we have uh, chaps available and in use. Uh, I've got safety glasses, ear protection, uh, and gloves. So for starting, I want to utilize my, my decompression switch. That offers some relief for the, for the starter assembly and should always be utilized. The, uh, the choke is still manipulated in the same way in that you need to engage the throttle and safety all the way down to the full choke position. We'll pull until we get a bump. After that engine tries to bump and turn over, we manually pull it up to the half choke position and pull again for, for the complete start. At that time, if you're choosing to start the saw in a with or without the chain brake, if your brake is engaged and the engine turns over, take that moment to disengage the brake and then run the saw through. Uh, before you let it idle and, and let it sit at an idle uh, before running the saw through its paces. Okay, so again, uh, the uh, decompression switch is engaged. My preference is to start the chain brake off. I'm in full choke. My preference is to set a foot inside. I get one bump. Now, going to half choke, my expectation should be that this chain, is, the saw is going to start and the chain is going to be moving. So 
I'd like to also talk briefly about our, our post run. So this is just a normal rig check. If I take the saw off the rig and start the saw, this is what it looks like for me. Uh, post running the saw, I'm also going to take the, uh, the bar cover off here, actually take the bar off the sprocket and do some maintenance just wiping the bar oil that weeps out during normal operation from behind the bar and from the underneath of the saw. So we'll kind of go through that right now. So I'll start just by breaking the bar, bar nuts loose. This allows me to loosen the tensioner. Break the bar nuts loose and the cover will come right off. So we didn't run the saw very long there. In that demo, we ran the saw for about 10 seconds. And you can see we actually get a significant amount of, of oil built up, just bar oil, just flying free on the, on the bar. So what I like to do is to take the flap cover off. It's just indexed on those pegs here. Wipe the inside of the cover down. Chain comes off the back of the, the back sprocket. And you'll notice I also have a significant amount of uh, bar oil built up just on the on the uh, saw itself, on the saw body itself. I'm just gonna wipe that down. This is not something I have to get crazy on, but this is also an area where we tend to get a lot of buildup, especially post-use, post-incident. This is a must. And we'll also get oil coming down here. When replacing the bar, uh, there's a couple fail safes that we can utilize if, if uh, if this is something we're new to and we're not used to seeing which way the chain is oriented on the bar, the bar can go, can flip either way. So it is really easy to, uh, to put the chain on backwards. And we'll notice here, we'll get a, a, a little quick close up of that later. There's actually a picture of a chain link right here and which way it's oriented. that we've got the rake in front of the cutting tooth, okay? The tensioner indexes inside the bar there. I'm not so graceful at this, I don't do it every day, but. Okay, so now I've got it on. Now I can just set just a little bit of tension on it, just to make sure that I'm, that my, uh, I'm inside of the bar on both sides. And then it just gives, offers me a little stability before I put the cover back on. <clears throat> Replacing the cover, I want to be mindful that that this peg here is indexed through the other side. You can notice it'll actually go through without 
setting in, so I just want to set that through. And start my nuts till they're hand tightened again. We can go through that procedure again. We notice we've got some slack here underneath the chain. We just tip the bar in. Just till the chain comes up and touches. Bar nuts need to be tight, but they don't need to be overly tight. And this time I can, I feel right away that I got that too snug. And my preference now that I've had this bar off, the chain off, <clears throat> with some protection here for my hand, I'm just gonna make sure that the chain runs through the bar. Also at the completion of running the saw, I wanna make sure that I'm shutting the saw or stopping the saw uh, from, a, from a full throttle position. So I want this, the engine to be out and screaming before I turn it up to the, to the off position. And the reason for that is I want a nice hot plug when the, when the engine shuts down or when we kill the ignition. Uh, that way we don't end up fouling plugs or trying to start a, a cold saw with a, with a wet plug, so to speak. So I want a nice hot dry plug when I shut the saw down and then I can replace it on the apparatus. I wanna talk really quickly about safety with the chainsaw. Anytime that my saw is unattended, the brake is always engaged. Uh, it's our responsibility to be familiar with our tools and have an expectation that we know and understand when this chain is going to be moving and operational, especially in our starting procedure. Anytime I'm away from the saw or the saw is down, the brake is on. However, however if I'm in control of the saw, I'm comfortable operating with the chain brake off. When I restore the saw, it always comes back in that I that my uh, compression switch is again in, my brake is off, and we're back in full stop, which is all the way up. <laughs> 